So a lot was covered in episode one, the fundamentals. So that went from goal setting to my first jump attempts to the first workout of the program and a little bit of hooping on the side as well and a whole lot of context in between. But one thing I haven't gotten around to covering yet is my nutrition. So I've been pretty much working on maintenance calories lately. So since my last cut, I've been just pretty loose with it. I've been pretty calm, pretty controlled, nothing too wild, and I haven't been putting on too much weight either. So just very nice and steady. Christmas music has begun. So we're in that run up to Christmas now, and it would be real nice to drop a little bit of weight off because obviously I wanna have a lot of fun on Christmas as everybody does. And I wanna eat my food and not be bugging the whole time that I'm gonna be an absolute way all the next morning so i got a lock in a few weeks of just a nice cut hopefully drop a few kilos off relax over christmas and then we go hard after that with a new goal now to keep in mind so trying to jump and do an explosive training rather than hypertrophy and bodybuilding i need to just rein in nutrition just a little bit so especially because it has a direct impact on my ability to make that dunk being lighter in body weight and thus jumping and exploding with less weight holding me back, there's a good chance that this weight loss could improve my jump height. I mean, if I could drop five kg and instantly just be able to walk out there and boom, dunk, that would just be beautiful. But unfortunately, it just does not work like that. In reality, adhering to the program, improving my strength, power, and probably most importantly, my skill, that's what's really going to get me to achieving my final goal. But given some of the adversity I'm facing, like not being that tall, not having a great wingspan, being a bodybuilder, having a bit of a knee injury history, the margins that I could gain from dropping some weight could make a significant difference in achieving that dunk. It's not quite worth doing another jump attempt just yet. It's only been a few weeks since the start of the program, so we're not expecting anything huge. But Keep your eyes peeled because episode three, another attempt will be happening. But until that, the one thing we can really focus on is the workout. You may have noticed that quite a lot has changed from the previous episode. Part of the reason for that is that this is session two, whereas in episode one, I showed you session one. So there were always some differences there anyway. More importantly, this is the second block of training. So there have also been a few actual program tweaks. This means there's a couple new things to learn or relearn in some cases, so more getting used to the relevant movement patterns. Of course, compared to a bodybuilding leg day, there's a lot of differences aside from just exercise selection. There's a lot more work and different work in the jumping program before the main part of the session actually begins compared to my usual leg day. When training for hypertrophy, I'll focus on foam rolling and preparing the body for the upcoming session. This doesn't take longer than 10 minutes usually. However, on this jumping program, I have my warm up then I perform some dynamic movements, whereas for hypertrophy style lifting, I don't need to be dynamic and it'd be strong and stable in the given positions. So the style of warm up changes to reflect what I'm working towards in that session. Then we get to the jump circuit, so more specific work towards my goal that I would have no previous use for in a bodybuilding workout. Then the main part of the workout comes where some of the exercises are in fact exercises I would have performed regardless in a bodybuilding program. However, the sets and the rep ranges are different. Reps are lower on most of the loaded movements on this program, we focus on explosive power throughout the sets. This lets me go 100% all out in a short burst. Bodybuilding and hypertrophy is more geared towards time under tension, so again, there's a reason for this change. I've noticed that supersets are also utilized a little differently. So typical bodybuilding supersets work antagonistic muscles often, so like biceps and triceps, or even if I were to load the same muscle twice, I perform exercises that work the muscle slightly differently or in a different range of motion. The new program supersets follow a slightly different pattern. I load the muscle first and then for the second part of the superset, the load is removed. I then perform an exercise in a similar movement pattern, but with the addition of the jump to increase transferability to dunking. It's a lot of fun for me getting used to the program and seeing how everything works. It's great learning new training styles and seeing it all unfold slowly over time. So overall, it feels a lot more like a cardio session if I'm being honest, but having some familiar bodybuilding exercises weaved in makes it a really fun sort of hybrid. These early blocks of the program are pretty simple while I'm still adapting to the new style and movement patterns, but I reckon by the next block or maybe even the block after that, we'll start to see more dunk specific work as I keep progressing.
Loving how you wind up for me Tonight is all on me Mash up the place for me Yeah, yeah She just want a high life Ooh, we that body talk to me I need a taste, baby Loving the way Loving the way you move around me No more delay No, you can wait to shut it down Want you show me how you work it I can't find no flaws, you perfect Cause every time that you come around my way I keep falling, falling big I keep falling, falling big So obviously, I am not built for Duncan So most of the guys you see dunk are obviously much taller They got that big boy wingspan And they're generally built a lot slimmer too but these things just make it easier for them. And of course, there are always exceptions to the rule. There are guys like Nate Robinson, who's famous for his dunks, and he's, I think he's only 5'9". I mean, let's not talk about the boxing though, please. And of course, we have Alan Iverson too, who I don't think I need to give any more context. He is the guy, and he had a serious dunk, and I'm pretty sure he was only six foot or probably just under. So both of these guys were six foot or below, and they will put in people on some nasty ass posters. So at the end of the day, it is a skill. So like I said, no, I'm not built for it, but I can control only what I can control. And the things that I can control are skill, power, and strength. Adhering to the program and improving and developing these aspects over time will hopefully lead to an increase in my vertical <laughs> jump height. Then perhaps in the upcoming block, or it might even be in the block after that, once we start to see some more transferable dunk sort of exercise selection and programming, only then can we start to sort of let our mind drift to possibly achieving that dunk in a certain time frame. But for now, we're not there yet. It's one step at a time, so I've just got to keep working on that strength, skill and power, and hopefully everything will come together nicely. Thank you very much for watching episode 2 of the 510 Bodybuilder Learns to Dunk. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. So remember to like, comment and subscribe and turn on that notification bell too so you can see exactly when we drop our next video. And of course, you'll be the first to see when episode 3 comes out.